are about to receive the blessing that we always receive in the encouragement of our beloved John the Beloved, our senior pastor. Savor this word, senior pastor, right? Savor it, our senior pastor. You know why, he knows why, I know why. And we just invite him to come to bless us with his encouragement and to receive our blessing and our love as we listen attentively and allow ourselves to internalize the blessing that he's sharing with us this morning. Welcome him for me now. Me no know why. Oh, no know why? Good morning, family. The why is at the center of our being, our reason for being a community, for gathering in person or online. It's the reason that our hearts are connected by that, those cords of everlasting unity that hold us together as a spiritual community. And we embrace everyone who comes to share in the glory of the knowing that we are the beloved of the Almighty, the creative and sustaining source from whom all blessings flow. And before I forget, Reverend Sonia in the announcement said, uh, quiet moments in the garden, come, it don't dare. Quiet moments in the garden are on uh, Facebook, so please don't come to the temple, which has happened of, uh, occasionally, uh, but meet me in the garden online in the morning at six. So we are truly thankful, but we're really blessed that we were spared the a hard, direct hit eh? by, what him did name? Yeah. Hurricane Ian. And our hearts go out, my friends, to all those cities to the north of us that, that were uh, badly affected. I had intended my encouragement this morning to be on the subject of how we can access the abundance, the prosperity, the peace, and the well-being of our creative and sustaining source when we stop chasing all good in the outside world and go within to seek that presence and power that dwells at the very center of our beings. And then came the threat of the, um, the tropical storm and then the hurricane. And a friend of mine called from abroad to say that uh, he had me in prayer. He had Jamaica in prayer. And you know, it's lovely, it's wonderful. Whenever anything is, is, is pending, Jamaicans both here and in the diaspora uh, immediately go to prayer. We really are a praying people. And one can actually feel the energy of prayer uh, if, you know, when, when souls get together and share in that. And then this was particularly wonderful this time because I have a wonderful friend, my very good friend Stephanie Kerrins, visiting from Ireland. Welcome, Stephanie, to our hearts. Lovely to have you. <laughs> Give her a hand. And of course, her husband in Ireland just, you know, was a bit anxious because his beloved is here and said to her, look here, if, if, if any breeze starts to blow, get the next plane out. So um, there was more, even more reason for me to, prayer, to pray. But you know, friends, I have to admit, every time we have a, a, one of those threats, you know, from the depression starts to form, wherever it starts to form, there's this rising angst among people, isn't there? And so I have to admit that as the hurricane Ian approached, I began to feel buffeted by the mounting anxiety evidenced by people. I was in the supermarket and you can feel it is palpable, the anxiety as people start snatching up every crust of bread and you know, um, I was in the line and I could feel myself becoming really irritable and I guess at e ill at ease and distressed and so I left. I was only picking up a couple of things and I put, I put them down and I left to go home, to go where none of that can touch you. Where is that? Within. And so I went home to do my, my evening meditation. And in that meditation came to me the realization that not only is there calm 
in the EYE, the eye of the storm, but that the I, capital I, at the center of every storm is also at peace. That I that our Rastafarian brothers and sisters call I and I is the essence of our being. It is who we are, created in the image and likeness of something that knows nothing of chaos and disorder. It knows only its own power, its own beauty, its own natural unfoldment. And so I, I just got this sense of deep calm and, and the deep knowing that all weather is God's weather. And therefore, all is well. So my friends, I want us to talk this morning about the I at the center. The I that you are, the I that I am. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes, and I quote, at the center of my being is peace. That peace that is felt in the coolness of early evening after men have turned from their labor and the first star shines in the soft light of a translucent sky. Uh, Holmes was so poetic. He continues, there is a freshness, a vitality, a power underlying this peace. It broods over the earth quietly, tenderly, as a mother watches over her sleeping baby. End of quote. What a lovely peace to have um, and to experience. And so friends, let us allow that peace right now to hold us gently right where we are as we affirm together, at the center of my being, the I that I am is at peace. Together, at the center of my being, the I that I am is at peace, in a half voice. At the center of my being, the I that I am is at peace, in a whisper. At the center of my being, the I that I am is at peace. Now say it in your heart. So my friends, that peace that sort of happiness generated when you go within is far different from the fleeting gratification that comes from the physical pleasures of the outer world. It is a lasting joy that transcends any apparent dangers and threats in the outer world of form, and is, it is untainted, untouched, and unaffected by external circumstances. To attain such happiness, you must first discover its nature, its source, and then be willing to accept it at its price. And believe you me, it does have a price, but it is a price well worth paying. The nature of happiness, my friends, is so simple that it is usually ignored. Its origin is so wonderful that it is rarely understood. The Greeks had a word for it, eudaimonia, which means having a good spirit. And Plato spoke of his demon or his inner guiding spirit. Another philosopher, Pascal, went a step further and defined the source of, the good, of this good spirit thus, quote, happiness is not within us or without us. It is union of ourselves with God. Happiness is neither within us or outside of us. It is a union of ourselves with God. So I want to tell you a story about a king who yearned to know the true meaning of inner peace, to feel that stillness that comes when you know how to go within and access it. And so he offered a prize to the artist in the kingdom who could paint the best picture of peace. So he had this kind of competition in the kingdom. And many artists submitted entries. The king looked at all the pictures, but there were only two he really liked, and he had to choose between them. So he narrowed down the choice to two, to two paintings. One picture was of a calm lake. The lake was a perfect mirror for peaceful, towering mountains all around it. Overhead was a blue sky dotted with fluffy white clouds. And all who saw this picture thought it was a perfect picture of peace. The other picture had mountains too, 
but these were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell and, the, you know, and lightning flashed in the distance. And down the side of the mountain roared a foaming water, waterfall. And so to the court, the king's court, this did not look peaceful at all. It looked like, you know, foreboding, a threatening storm, uh, you know, the barometric pressure dropping and what have you. But when the king looked closely, he saw behind the waterfall a tiny bush growing in a crack in the rock. And in the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. And in that nest, of course, there were two chicks. So in the midst of the rush of angry water sat the mother bird with her two babies in her nest in perfect peace. So which picture do you think won the prize? The king chose the second picture, the one I just described. And you know why? He explained, peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. Peace means to be in the midst of all those things and still be calm in your heart. To be in the midst of apparent confusion and chaos and be the I, capital I, in the EYE of the storm. Peace means that in the midst of all that is happening around you, you can go within like that little bird and be still. But to gain this kind of happiness, my friends, you must know who you are. You must set a goal and work toward the self-fulfillment and the attainment of that goal to be at peace wherever you are. To thine own self be true. And when you are you find that the essence of abiding happiness is within you. And you work at its development so that your higher nature comes forth in all circumstances, wherever you are and whatever is happening in the world around you. And this is why I love the study of this teaching known as the science of mind and spirit. The study of this science is the study of yourself. It is the study that leads you to self-mastery, to taking control and responsibility for yourself and learning to rely on your higher self, the big S, the I, that is the I and I in the midst of the storm. And it takes you back, this teaching, and gives you practical steps so that you can take these steps as you seek conscious union with the source, the creative and sustaining source of your supply, of your good, of your health, of your happiness. Trust me, it is very, very, very important to do this work. Because you see, there are not only weather systems that threaten to inundate us. And you know, people say they are bracing for the storm. Notice the word brace. When you brace, what do you do? You tense up. And when you tense up, you get hurt, don't you? It becomes more painful. So this teaching teaches you to take control of your own thoughts, to choose how you want to feel and to work on that. And the attainment of this union with this indwelling presence and power that knows no, no chaos, no obstacles, no storms, the storms that may be financial. The storms may be emotional when you, you have broken up with someone or lost a loved one or something has gone wrong in the family. And it is as real as if you were expecting a hurricane and you feel as buffeted sometimes, don't you? And as helpless perhaps too. And you're battened down. But my friends, when you go within to find the I, the capital I that you are, and to commune with that spirit that is within you, everything on the outside falls into place. And you are allowed to see it in the true perspective as you look through the eyes of God 
at the storms of life and can say to all the circumstances on the outside in the human world, the words used by the master when he calmed the winds and the waves. What? Peace, be still. So the first step in attaining this sense of, of equilibrium and equanimity is accepting God's existence as a fact. Knowing that God, and it's not a little man with a beard sitting down in the clouds writing down your mistakes, th that they, the energy, that the, the, God is a law, a principle, and we personalize it. Jesus personalized this principle and this law and called it Father. Wow. I pray for the day when we can all honor the fathers as being the representative and the embodiment of caring and nurturing and protection and strength and goodness. So Jesus called that indwelling presence and power Father, and he was sure of its existence. So he could say, of myself I do nothing. Who? The Father within. He does the work. So this is a very important step. And when you find this balance and allow this, this presence within you just to enfold you, as Holmes says, in the cool of evening, like a mother brooding over a baby, just allow that peace to enfold you and hold you close. You can say, thank you, Father. Over to you. The second step is accepting the fact that you are just as vital a part of creation as all other parts of creation. And this awakens an awareness that your acts and thoughts either contribute to this delicate balance or detract from it. Someone said you cannot pick a flower without a star trembling. We are all connected. And so in addition to, uh, to realizing God as the only presence and power in step one, step two is to know that you are a part of this godness, this goodness, this, this wholeness, this completeness, this amazing matrix of life, and that life would not be the same if you were not a part of it. Wow. Let's just say together, I am an important part of life. Together, I am an important part of life. And then, my friends, the third step is the hardest one for many of us. I'm looking around, and I know many of our ladies that are really very powerful, self-sufficient, and, you know, accomplishing spirits. This step is really hard for those people, and it's the step of surrender. To let go and allow life, allow the life that is God to have its way with you. And the, the reason it's hard for some, for some people, not only um, the, 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 the high-achieving ladies, you know, or, or myths, but for all people, is that for us somehow we've been taught that surrendering is a sign of weakness, that it's giving in. But we need to commend our spirits into those hands, the hands of grace that held us from the moment we were born and that will sustain us all the days of our life and beyond into eternity. So we must Surrender, as they say in this teaching, let go and let God, so that we can truly say, not my will, but thine, be done. It doesn't mean that you're going to be, sit passively and do nothing, of course not. But you are going to allow that presence within to direct your footsteps upon the pathway. And once you take this step, everything in your life takes on a new meaning because you suddenly know that in surrendering, rather than giving over your power, it empowers you. It strengthens you, because you know you do not walk alone. There's a power within you that knows, and knows just exactly when to move, when to hold, when to step back, when to push forward. And God will guide you to your rightful place in the amazing, miraculous, and divine scheme of life. You know, I was traveling with our beloved founding minister, Dr. Elmer. I think we were Reverend Sonia, Reverend Michael Record, um, Reverend Anne Shand, and myself, and 
uh, Reverend Errol Thomas at the time, was, we were in Monterey, and it was pouring with rain. And so we asked the front desk at the, at the hotel to get us a cab. And they said, no, just step out onto the, onto the, uh, onto the, the Port Cashier, and the taxis are pulling up there every two or three minutes. And so said, so done. So as we stepped out, two taxis pulled up. There was one in the front and one behind him. And so I was guiding her by the elbow towards the front taxi, and she said, no, dear, let's take that one, the one behind her. So I did, if you know, obedient disciple and chela. So as I helped her in, and I sat beside her and uh, told him where we wanted to go, I said, why, Reverend Tell me, why did you choose this one? She said, well, dear, the, the one on the front had a bumper sticker that said, God is my co-pilot, and I want a cab where God is the driver. She wasn't easy, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> if God is your co-pilot, my friends, you need to switch seats right here or now and choose God as the pilot <laughs> this morning. You need to let go to surrender and simply say, over to you, God. Let's say that together. Over to you, God. So when you give over control, God opens avenues for expression of your innate talents, some of which you may not even know that you, ha you, that you have. You may not even be aware of it. Uh, in our, I always tell the story of what I affectionately call the University of Tower Street, the prison here in Kingston, because I learn as much as I think I offer to them in terms of self-knowledge and self-growth. And there, you know, I can tell you many, many people, and I think Reverend Michael Record and Reverend Anne Shand and practitioner Carol Charlton will agree with me, that uh, in there, people come to the realization that they wouldn't have learned what they learned and discovered themselves and their purpose if they hadn't had that experience. So that for, there was some kind of plan perhaps designed by themselves, on, on subconsciously or unconsciously, that took them to that experience so that they could learn something or teach something. People said, you know, I, I learned to read and write here, or I learned that I could, I could play an instrument or I could teach other people. Um, and so wonderful things happen when we say, over to you, God. And of course, they have lots of time on their hands. And as Robert Michael said to one class, he said, use this time to prepare. Don't say, when I get out, I am going to do so and so, do so. He said, start from now. That's one of the best lessons we have ever taught. Don't wait. And it's a lesson for us too, my friends. You know, we say, when all of this chaos is over and I've gotten over the, you know, the churn, I've, I've, I've got, gotten past the worst and I've left university or whatever it is, when the storm is over, I will begin to look after, number one. I will begin to... To, to pursue my dream and to fulfill my purpose. Don't. Start now. And you know, the wonderful thing is that in your cooperation with God, it eliminates the need for you to compete with anyone else. You're not in any competition. There is no competition. There is enough to go around. Am I right or am I right? Absolutely. So you know that working with God, you are fulfilling that purpose. And you know, an acquaintance of mine was saying that he has a new business, and that, um, but there's plenty of competition. And I reminded him, I said, there's no competition. There is enough for you. Just do what you do to the best that you know how. And the people that are right for you, the clients that are right for you, the customers that are right for you, will be attracted to you because there's a law of attraction. Just make God your CEO, your pilot, your paymaster, and your guide. So my friends, that each of you should have a deep abiding peace and happiness has been God's desire from the very beginning of time, no matter what the storms of life are doing outside there. And you have the choice of happiness in God or unhappiness and frustration in a consciousness that is apart from God. God, we need to heal that sense of separation. And ho however pleasurable you might find life seems to be apart from God, one day you will find that it is empty and you remain hungry and your heart remains devoid of that peace that comes from living at the center when the storms of life blow. So this brings me to your assignment.
take time this week to go inside and recognize God as all. Just like say, God is all. Unify with God by affirming your oneness with the one and then declare from the peaceful center of my being where God abides, I say to the storms of life, peace be still. Let me repeat that for you. From the peaceful center of my being where God abides, I say to the storms of life, peace be still. Can you say that with me? From the peaceful center of my being where God abides, I say to the storms of life, peace be still. And oh my God, my friends, I promise you, the wind and the waves will obey you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Reverend John. As usual, as usual, he has enriched us and always given us something to chew on to enrich our souls during the weeks to come and in during our lives, rest of our lives. From the peaceful center of my being, I say to the storms of life, peace be still. I know each of you have grabbed a pearl or two or many. You can, it's so rich that it deserves being um, seen again. But I know the essence for me is the importance that Reverend John has stressed on the fact that we need all the power that we need to know that we are at peace has already been given. And therefore, it is our, the price we pay is the intention that we will give our attention to the presence the indwelling presence, to know that it is neither here nor there, it is where we are and everywhere. And therefore, it is that which is able to bring us the peace continuously that we seek, desire, deserve, and which already resides at the center of our being. Thank you again, Reverend John. Thank you.